I got into van life not because of the inside of my van, but because of what it was outside. I generally find it very frustrating to use that people just sort of look at you like you're like you're crazy. <laughs> There's also some other really cool aftermarket parts you can get. Hey, my name is Josiah Rowe, and this is Barb the Barbarian. She's a 1982 Volkswagen van in Westphalia. Why don't you come on inside? All right, so most of the interiors in my Vanagon are still the stock Westfalia Vanagon cabinetry that's been around for 40 years, and it's pretty common in most of the ones you've seen. So we've got the stove top up here and a sink, the two burner stove, we've got some cabinets down here. A lot of folks like to put a fridge there. I have not, I use it for storage for food. You've got your drawers over here for silverware or whatever else you wanna put in it. Um, a couple more storage units here and another little storage unit down there. It's pretty ingenious what uh, Volkswagen came up with for them. And they've kind of been the standard for a really long time. You don't see a lot of Vanagon for something other than the standard set. Although I've been saving my interiors for last and I plan on doing a whole new set of cabinetry that kind of utilizes some of the cool modern stuff that we've come up with in the last 10 years of van life. Um, but I've been kind of saving that for last, but we'll get to that in a bit. All right, what we've got here is the standard Dometic uh, fridge-freezer combo. I've had this thing for about six years. It works great. It's got the the uh, drip draw on my battery and my solar system. I mean, it's your pretty standard one. I've got it covered with stickers from six years of van events and the rest. And then what I have down here is um, a fridge stand, which is made by a company called Vanagon Life for Dimension Designs out of Salem, Oregon, which just gives me extra storage space, ease of access. And I've got a nice little swing away pole here if I want to put a table on it. Or in my case, I sometimes mount a giant ass portable speaker when you're trying to have a good time with a group of friends. So one of the things about the original Vanagans is they did not have a modern electrical system. But the nice thing about it being a 40 year old vehicle is that people have been working on these things for a really long time. So what I have in mind as I've tried kind of every combination is what I like to have is about 200 amp hours of uh, lithium ion power, which I have from Go Power, about 300 watts of solar on the roof. And then I actually have a Delta Max and I even have an EcoFlow, uh, an EcoFlow Delta Max, which is amazing. And then I have a Jackery 1500 too, because I like having the flex panel because you can just angle them at the sun better. I don't have to move my rig trying to get the draw. I just need that extra power because I do a lot of work on computers. I've got my uh, media server here and I just need that extra juice. So I've kind of got a little bit of a hybrid grid. Um, I plan on adding some extra um, battery power to the grid when I redo my cabinetry and I can kind of maximize the space down there. I really, really, really love this leather, I don't know what to call it, a uh, device and stuff holder from a company called Venture Libre. Uh, it's manufactured in Mexico. Uh, it's a couple of dudes, one's out of Portland, the other one lives down in La Paz. They're really rad. They actually make them for the Promaster and Sprinter now too. Uh, it's incredibly convenient. I got ease of access to the stuff that I need without having to dig around and root in the drawers. And it just gives me more storage space, which is kind of always a thing in van life. Now, I don't do a lot of cooking, so, and I don't particularly care for the fact that if I'm standing up, I can't really reach what's going on in the sink and the burners. So you kind of have to kneel down. So I don't really like that too much about the van again. So I'm thinking about the future and what I want to do with a whole new cabinetry setup. Um, the nice thing about the Van Aken community, having been around for 40 plus years, uh, is that a lot of folks have thought through a lot of different ways to sort of solve these problems. So there's a couple of places that make some really cool, uh, kind of improved versions of these. Some you can work with, you really understand the dimensions and how to mount them in the vans to do really cool custom sets. So I've got an idea that works a little bit more for how I work. A lot of times when I want to cook or do something fun like that, I'm grilling out anyway. I've got an external two burner GSI stove. I pull out, I set it on the swing away tray and we're grilling out and making steaks or doing something over the barbecue anyway. Look, it's a big world and I wanna see as much of it as I can before it gets dark. I got into van life not because of the inside of my van, but because of what it was outside. I don't really like uh, flying. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's awesome. North America is amazing, the west side especially. I was splitting my time between San Francisco and Fort Collins, Colorado, and I uh, got tired of flying and skipping over uh, a bunch of stuff that looked really beautiful. Uh, and then once I saw this van, I was, uh, I was hooked. Um, and since then, I don't know how many times I've crisscrossed the western half of the US. Uh, this will be my seventh winter going to Baja, and uh, I was hoping to start the the Pan American head up to Alaska this summer, but I uh, got distracted. Started a uh, starting a uh, a uh, van <laughs> gathering series. Um, uh, which has gone, been a blast. It kind of started down in Baja with our big event down there, but um, yeah, I love exploring. I love seeing new places. I love getting out into it, you know, posting up at some epic campsite, climbing a mountain, doing fun stuff. 
Yeah, um, that's what kind of got me hooked on it. I have a production company called Granite and Light. We do photo and video production, uh, working a lot with destination marketing organizations like your uh, Travel Oregon, Visit California, um, the Oregon coast where we are right now. Um, and then we publish a magazine called The Journal of Lost Time, which is focused on deeper, more immersive travel experiences. Um, it's all about kind of slowing down and being in a place for more than just uh, a week. It's kind of like the anti-cruise ship approach to travel, which I think kind of works nicely for van life. Um, and our, my entire team, you know, started out with just me, uh, now grown to about a dozen folks. And uh, for the most part, we're all nomads, which is a trip, uh, but, um, it's, we do it because we're passionate about it and we love storytelling. We love uh, that joy that comes with somebody going like, hey, I read that really awesome piece about the island of Roatan and I went there for two months and got my dive certification and just had the most wonderful time. Um, and that makes you feel really, really great. So where I like to work is usually right here. I can put my feet up on the fridge if I want to. I can set my table here. Sometimes, as you know, in vans, you've got all sorts of junk in here. I can put my feet up and make space. I know other folks like to create desks and whatnot, but I just kind of enjoy sitting right here. I can lean against the window, enjoy the view of the ocean. Uh, and this is usually where I do most of my work. I've got my little cooler there if I'm in hotter climates from Evapolar, which has been working really, really nice. Um, but yeah, this is generally where I do most of my work. For internet, I've got uh, the new Starlink internet. For the longest time, I had a cell phone booster with um, uh, from Nextivity and it worked pretty good. But as anyone knows, uh, having access to cell is kind of the thing you need. Uh, and then you got all the hotspots issues with bandwidth. Now that I've got Starlink, oh my gosh, it's a game changer. Um, I've had no real issues with it anywhere other than when uh, the satellites are on the other side of my camper top when it's up. All right, so some of the genius of the German engineers is that in a vehicle of this size, they and this is before the existence of sprinters and promasters or anything that we think about now in the van world is they figured out a way to put four people in a vehicle this size uh, by ingeniously coming up with a uh, backseat system that slides forward and it's about a twin size bed. Some people will take out this cabinetry and get you close to a queen, but not quite. And then up top, you've, when the camper tops up, this flips forward and you can sleep another two people up top. Now, four people in here is a quite, uh, quite a crowded, uh, crew. Uh, but I've definitely seen some families in here doing it, but, um, it's really easy to set up. It takes about two minutes and, uh, yeah, it sleeps pretty comfortably, uh, pretty warm in, uh, in the winter and pretty, uh, cool in the summers when you open up the windows. Um, I mostly sleep down here just because it's convenient. Uh, I've got this giant bison fur I got from uh, this awesome First Nations guy in Thermopolis, Wyoming. And uh, that's been basically my bed for, um, for the last five years. And uh, yeah, Rona kind of likes the bison too. She does all right with it. Yeah, now we're gonna reveal the, uh, the messy uh, bachelor side of things. Um, I usually keep my laundry up here, shirts and the rest over there, shorts and pants over here. Um, the original ones tended to have speakers up here, but I had those yanked and installed on the bench seat just for size and volume, of course. Um, and here's usually where I keep my laundry and some miscellaneous stuff. And in the back, there's another cabinet, but that's usually where I keep like uh, automotive things, a couple spare parts, some standard stuff you always want to keep with the van again because it is a 40 year old vehicle. Um, things like the fuel pump and the rest. Um, down here is usually where I keep my toiletries. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for storage. Um, the nice thing about the pop top is that even if I do have a lot of stuff down here, when I'm stopped for the night, I can pop the top, chuck my backpack up there, trash bag. Um, it's also up top is where I keep um, my flex solar panels because there's a little bit of space when the top's down. I also have a whole um, fire pit from Snow Peak and it folds down and fits nicely in the back there. So um, yeah, it's pretty convenient. I know it's clear, cliche to say, you know, cause I left, um, I left the high paying tech thing. I think I was a little, it's my own ignorance and my own naivete. I was a little bit surprised at the stigma that people just sort of looked at you like you're, like you're crazy. <laughs> and I know, but I mean, it's not like it was like I suffered for it or anything like that. It was just more, I would go back and see friends back in the Bay or something like that. And they're like, you're doing what? Like your photos are amazing and where you're going is rad and it looks incredible, but it's like, I'm like an alien, like a dog walking on his front legs or something like that. When you come back, I think that was the part that I found a little bit surprising because for me, it felt so very like, well, no, like, why wouldn't you want to go to Yosemite? Like, 
Like you've lived in the Bay your entire, you've never gone and seen Yosemite. Like the Grand Canyon's right there. It's, it's a day's drive. Let's go see that. Um, I think that's the part that was a little surprising to me. Um, of course, there's a thousand other little odd quirks and the rest, but that was probably the one that was a little bit surprised that like it is a break with your non-nomadic community because um, your lives become very different very quickly. That, that part kind of, yeah, I was pretty ignorant of that jump. Um, I mean, loneliness was definitely a thing, but uh, we're finding ways to find each other and um, it's pretty cool um, the way humans will create community. Like we've been all hanging out together on this awesome spot on the Oregon coast after the event. Most of us didn't necessarily know each other that well beforehand, but um, yeah, it's pretty lovely. It's lovely seeing that. It's lovely seeing relationships come out of these gatherings, you know, like it's, yeah, I mean, some folks at this last event, they found a building in town they really loved and they decided they're gonna put down roots there. Like that's beautiful in its own right. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, I love it. I wouldn't live any other way. So what I have here is an ARB awning. It's a pretty much a standard awning that you see on a lot of vehicles today. Uh, I generally find it very frustrating to use because it's uh, it's pr almost a two person job to get it done. Uh, it's kind of annoying in the wind and the rest, but it does come with some perks, like being able to get a sealed room around it if you really wanna have some privacy when you're setting up camp for a long period of time, or like I do at Burning Man. Um, I'm definitely enjoying my moon shade, which I've got tucked back in there because it gives me a lot more flexibility. I can mount it anywhere on my vehicle takes me two minutes to set up. I don't need two people to do it. Um, they've done some pretty cool stuff improving the overall user experience of awnings that uh, I'm sad to say Araby just seems to have dropped the ball in the last few years. Other things to talk about is uh, up here is what's the standard vanning and luggage rack. A lot of people like to put lock boxes or uh, big plastic hard cases up there to, to carry stuff. I've got um, a couple of trippy chairs, which I really, really enjoy. There's this kind of new wooden chair manufacturer that kind of fit up there quite nicely. And of course I got my Starlink internet. That's where I talk my um, uh, the satellite dish up uh, whenever I'm setting up my internet. Um, I run the cable right here through the door. Some people run it through the front part of the pop top. Um, there's several ways you can do it. It's kind of easiest for me to just pull it out and chuck it up top when I'm parked for the night and I want to set up the internet. I do have 300 watts of solar up there, which is really nice too. But uh, when I get the new top, I'm going to kind of shift it around because I want to make some more storage space up there just to give myself a little bit more room and maybe a little bit more solar. So um, again, I have uh, several aftermarket parts on the back of my van from a company called Rocky Mountain West Deer Van Cafe out of Fort Collins. Um, I've got a swing away tray here. You can use it for pretty much anything you want. Uh, it folds down, but I like to keep my sound box speaker. Badass Bluetooth speaker. It's awesome. I can connect to it from the front. You can actually connect a whole bunch of them together. It's nice when you want to have a little bit of a mobile party. I always like to keep five gallons of spare fuel. It's not a large fuel tank in the van again. You're lucky if you're getting 250 miles range, which isn't a lot. So especially when I'm out in the middle of nowhere. I've also got the spare tire, just vital, especially when you're out in the boonies. And I've got the big badass bump and the tow hitch I can plug in. I've got a trailer when I'm going to parties or Burning Man or just help my parents out around the house, need to move some stuff and they need help with things. I've got the tow hitch and with the bigger engine, I can actually do that. So another thing I really like about my van again is that again, I've got the external ladder. This comes from a van cafe, again, out of Fort Collins. It gives me easy access to the roof. What's nice is it fits right into this little hitch here so you can extend it out if I need to. Just pops out with a pin. It's a really convenient thing. You kind of put it wherever you want. There's also some other really cool aftermarket parts you can get. There's a bunch of window replacements you can do to mount the shovel or your max tracks. Um, that's kind of one of the next projects I'm gonna be working on with uh, Vanigan Life out of Salem, Oregon. Uh, but yeah, we've got the additional air intakes over here just to kind of punch up uh, how much air you're letting in your van, which kind of helps with the horsepower. So this is the front of the van again, which I've done a good bit of stuff to. Got the Twin Peaks grill and bumper setup from Rocky Mountain Westy that I talked about. A lot of folks like to mar mar uh, mount light bars here, maybe a hijack. Uh, sometimes they'll even put a winch on there. I put my uh, uh, light bar up here from Oxbeam with the Vanigan Life mounting brackets. I've got the South African grill with the additional LED lights here that's just super, super bright. And uh, you can see here we had a laser cut out for the uh, radiator when I did the conversion from air cooled to a water cooled uh, 1.8T. Uh, all the best things in life are on the other side of fear. Uh, and it's pretty cool uh, what you can do when you don't put limits on yourself. Um, yeah, I think that's probably 
probably the best advice I could give. Um, it's not easy telling folks to be brave. I mean, it's, but yeah, it's pretty wonderful. I think the more you make, the more you make your life uh, about something more than yourself, outside of yourself, and I would say like outside of your van, um, the easier that is, the more rich it is. Um, it's been a little strange to see how much van life kind of became about the inside of the van and not the outside of the van in the last five, six years. Um, and I think maybe, I mean, I know it was exacerbated by the pandemic and other things where we couldn't travel, but the more you make it about something that's outside of yourself, which includes humans and this beautiful planet we live on that we're managing to mess up, um, I think the richer and not necessarily easier it will come, but um, maybe the more joy-filled it will be. And uh, at least that's worked for me. Thanks for coming to see my van. It's been awesome to talk and share with you guys today. Um, if you wanna hear more about the events I'm involved with or some of the storytelling we're doing, you can check out the journal of lost time.com. We're pretty much on every uh, social media channel. Um, you can also hear about our, our events on there that we call the lost places. Um, probably about the time this video comes out, our next one is actually all the way down at the bottom of Baja. It's an event called Escobar La Baja. I will say this unequivocally, it will be the best van event you ever go to. Uh, bookended by the best road trip you're ever going to do, Baja's Van Life Perfection. Um, and then after that, we've got some other really cool events planned for you in 2023 that we're still scheming on. Uh, please let us know if you'd like to get involved in some way. We really encourage them to be like a canvas for the community to really express yourself. You've got mobile tattoo artists and salons and every kind of volleyball tournaments and one wheel turn, it's just a blast. It's people get weird, of course, we're dancing till the wee hours. Um, and of course, check out the Journal of Lost Time uh, and if you want to follow along with me personally, it is Josiah Q, J-O-S-I-H-Q on Instagram for the most part. And uh, if I can help with anything in your travels or just looking for cool campsites in a cool corner of the world, if I know about them, I'm down to share. I try not to be too precious about that kind of stuff. Um, I'm into this because I like to explore and if I can help you explore a little bit more and find a safe, comfy place to camp for the night, I'm down to help. Just let me know.